Hello, welcome to 7 Minutes at 7 a.m. with Carolyn, your daily dip into Catholic Lent devotional. Today is another wonderful day of Lent. Uh, it is the Thursday of the fifth week of Lent. I am going to ju- I'm going to jump right into the scripture because I was sitting with the, today's scripture and meditating on it, and something beautiful came to me. So I want and I want to share that with you. All right. So our in our subtitle, I have a subtitle in each chapter, and I don't mention that very often. But I wrote the subtitle after I wrote the daily the daily that chapter, and so today it's God is faithful; He keeps His covenant. All right. And so he is, God is faithful. He keeps his covenant. So what is his covenant? And we see with Abraham a window into that covenant that he promises us. So I, God, will maintain my covenant between you, between me and you, Abraham, um, and your descendants after you through the ages as an everlasting covenant to be your God uh, and the God of your descendants after you. It's Genesis chapter 17, verse 7. So I'm going to stop right there because I want to reflect. I want to share my reflection or my, uh, my the, the, I call it sometimes the drop down that I received as I was reflecting on this scripture earlier. All right, so if you are a mom or a dad, I guess, or you know someone that's a mom or a dad, take a moment and think how you would feel if your child prostrated themselves before you saying, you are my mom, you are my dad, I want to please you, lead me, love me, show me the way, right? Wouldn't that be like amazing? Uh, so in this, in, in, this uh, in chapter 17, this is where Abraham receives his name because first he is Abram and then he prostrates himself, surrenders all of who he is to God. God creates him anew and calls him Abraham. So when that happens, God starts working in our life in a way that's very mysterious, kind of like a parent with a child. So let's say you have a child and you love your children. You're a good parent. You're trying, you love Jesus. You're trying to be a good Catholic parent and you're trying to do right, you know, the right thing for your child. And so it's like, you know, like broccoli is, broccoli is a good thing for them. They should eat their broccoli, right? Okay. So you go to the store, you buy some broccoli, you bring it home, you smother it in some cheese so they'll eat it. And they're like, nah, whatever. And maybe they'll eat it. I don't know. Uh, however, what they don't know and they can't see is your heart. When you, when you got that broccoli from the store, you put it in the cart and you brought it home and you prepared it for them. They can't see your love. They didn't see your action there. And likewise, you're a good Catholic parent so you or grandparent, right? And you want your children to know the faith. So you take them to mass. You take them to catechism class. You pray the rosary with them. You show them the Catholic faith. They can't see what is going on in your heart and in your mind when you're doing these things. All they can see is more the immediate. I don't want to go to mass. It's boring. It's, I don't want to go to catechism cast. I want to go to soccer, pla- soccer practice. I want to play with my friends. You know, and they can become resistant. Well, what they don't see is your love for them and your wisdom that you know that this is going to give them the health and the happiness that not only that they desire, but that God, the Father, has for them. So likewise, when we prostrate ourselves before God, we surrender to God, He starts working in our lives in ways that we can't see. Just like the child can't see mom's intention getting that broccoli and can't see mom and dad's intention taking them to catechism class. But God starts working in ways that are beyond human comprehension. He starts working in, as we've talked about before, the unseen world that we are immersed in. The unseen world is all around us. We are walking through it. We are living in it. And God is working in the unseen world for us. All right. So I'm going to go to uh, the gospel, the, the psalm today. And this is on page 209 in Catholic Women Gathering. No, oh, that's our Facebook page, Catholic Women Gathering, in Catholic Lent Devotional. All right. So Psalm 105, verse 8. All right. He remembers forever his covenant. God remembers forever his covenant that he made, he made that he made with us. The word he commanded for a thousand generations. How long is a thousand generations? a long time and it continues and continues continues to the children who love god continue to surrender to god the best we can in our brokenness because we are all suffering from the outflow of original sin from adam and eve 
the pains of that sin continue and we're still suffering from that, but God's covenant for us is stronger. Amen. It, it has authority over all that pain. And then the gospel today is John 8, chapter 58. Uh, Jesus said to them, amen, amen. I say to you before Abraham came to be, I am. Again, Jesus revealing who he is. He is the great I am. He is the second person of the Trinity. He is God, fully God, fully human. And before all of this covenant with Abraham that God entered into with Abraham and, and the Jewish people, the outflow of that, Jesus is I am. And now Jesus, where does he live? He lives in you. He lives in me. Like he is with us. He is the way the truth and the life. And he said that and he's a truth teller, right? So we're going to, we're going to go with it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. All right. Uh, so the tale is getting really cute now. Uh, there's beautiful things happening. Uh, and I particularly, as I went, read through it again today, the one line that I really liked is that when Father Bosco asked Kelly, Father Bosco told Kelly that he's telling all the villagers, the people of the village, that they're gonna, there's gonna be this great banquet at Kelly's home on Easter Sunday. And, he, and Father Bosco says, I hope you have room. And Jesus said, I know Jesus will make a way because he always makes a way. And Jesus always makes a way. All we have to do is say yes to him. I really hope you're enjoying the, the tale. Uh, I have now there's uh, two more brothers are introduced and there's a reason I chose five brothers because five brothers is very significant in scripture. I probably don't have enough time to go into that today, maybe another day, but I just know that there was a reason I chose five. Tonight, you get to reflect on Julian's wisdom today. And I'm just gonna briefly look at the first sentence in Julian's wisdom on page 212. Our Savior and, and our salvation are open and clear, beautiful and luminous and ample. There is room for all. And that is true. There is room for all of humanity in Jesus. He, everyone is welcome. And that can be our prayer that everyone open themselves to Jesus. He's not the one that's saying no. He is saying yes. Come, come, come. It's up to us to say yes. All right. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy that we have our little our little Facebook group and it keeps growing and that's wonderful. Well, I ask God to bless you in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>